so many companies I've worked with that just assume because you're a manager that you can actually interview people. It's just they think it's a given. But actually interviewing and, and you know, really getting the most out of it, that, that 30 minutes, 60 minutes you have with the candidate is an actual skill um, and needs to be trained. So make sure that you're investing in your managers as well in that process. that to be a manager of people, you need a very particular set of skills if that's not a line, a Liam Mason <laughs> line. But you know, to, to have that, that way of nurturing your team to get the best out of people, and then therefore equipping managers with the language to use and the questions to ask and what not to say, and really, really challenging lots of those myths and misconceptions out there because you are responsible for a person as part of your team and having been a manager of a very large team I, I understand this from lots of different angles but also you know as a manager to get your team to perform to their best you know even if you don't want the moral and social responsibility if you want your team to perform to their best they need to be well they need to be engaged they need to be motivated so I think the huge Thing when it comes to accommodating autistic people in the workplace is that it needs to be tailored to the individual and there needs to be like a conversation so it's not based on preconceived notions of what you think someone's needs might be based on what you perceive autism in general to be my mindset's changed disclosures have been seen as a two-way thing you know yeah we all worry what's the employer going to say but what do you need if you're gonna actually step up and do it and say i need this and i've got that and this can affect me and it falls on deaf ears, you don't get the support you require. So do you really want to work for the organisation? Yeah. You know, there's a lot more who will, who will work with you. Like if I use a small example, if you make a website more visually um, accessible to somebody who is sight impaired, you'll create a website that's easier to navigate for everybody. Yes. So it's a kind of a policy of, if you design with extreme needs in mind, you end up with benefits for the mean. Design for the extreme benefits the mean. It's proven. So if you take these things into consideration, you will end up with a workspace and HR yeah. policies and meeting policies and work from home policies that work better for everybody. It will make it easier if the employer had a, like a, a formal chat to the candidates, get to know more about them rather than having like a face-to-face -face or a virtual interview. Um, if I was going to the interview, I'll be helpful if an employer send the interview questions in advance so I can have enough time to prepare and be ready for it. Um, it was also helpful if I have extra time to think about the answers in terms of the questions that are being asked in the interview so that interviewers uh, understand that, that, they're, that they're aware of my autism. Yeah. And also, if I'm successful in the world, to allow extra, to offer extra workplace support uh, first in the job and to provide extra training to make me suitable for the role. Just talking through all of those really simple things that employers can do and it seems like the kind of the main theme of those adjustments is communication. So being yeah. clear, saying what you mean, making sure that your interview questions are exactly what they want for the job not just yeah. asking you to play the game to get through the interviews